So we're asking this year for all programs that include literacy and numeracy to report on progress of learners. Um, this shift, as I say, is, con is, is consistent with other aspects of the tertiary sector. Uh, that, of course, involves using the uh, assessment tool. Uh, this enables comparisons between programs and approaches. Uh, this, uh, over time, performance benchmarks will be established for different types of provision, but that's all, that's all down the track. Um, we're, we're just sort of walking before we run. So from 2012, the focus for literacy and numeracy and industry training will shift from the development of capability and capacity uh, for, to expecting it to be more business as usual for ITOs. Uh, and that's quite a big shift that's coming in 2012. From 2013, we want to see literacy and numeracy embedded in nearly all level one and two programs, apart from those in Te Māori, obviously, and there may be others where it doesn't make sense, but that's the sort of a, the sort of default position. So I'd like to see by 2013 at least 100,000 students having literacy and numeracy included to some elements in their courses. So the activity data has included the development of new educational infrastructure that will help build the skill level of educators. Here at the National Centre for Literacy and Numeracy for Adults, uh, they're working on a range of national professional development activities. And these include a focus on building skills within provider organisations to help with that embedding of literacy and numeracy. Also the online learning tools, the online lectures and case studies. On the uh, literacy, for uh, literacy and Numeracy Adult Assessment tool, um, we had a good discussion about the tool last year, um, so I'm looking forward to following that up in just a moment. Um, so it does have, though, I think, have a very important part to play in moving from um, good participation to, to, to great outcomes and results. And um, I think uh, by showing that, di by helping with that diagnosis and by helping with the uh, where exactly learners may require help, uh, that has the potential to, to really show learning progress but also assist in the process. And the data will help give us a more detailed picture of, what's, of how we're doing nationally as well as identifying areas where we need to improve. Now the people um, who have obviously, the TEC are obviously uh, very excited about this as well and they keep telling me that it has been named a finalist in the 2011 IPANS GNI Public Sector Excellence Awards, the tool. Um, it's great to have that sort of recognition. I'm looking forward to seeing the tool's speech at the awards. Um, and I figure sooner or later I'm going to get some notes which says either it won um, or it'll just quietly be dropped um, from my notes in the future, but we'll see. Um, just to conclude then, before we go to questions and discussion, the capability to include literacy and numeracy in tertiary education programs is now more widespread across all the tertiary sector. Um, so we have those components in place and I'd like to congratulate you all on your involvement in bringing that together. So the future will see a focus on increasing the number of learners still, uh, and we're making very good progress there now, continuous improvement to achieving better results with um, particularly two Māori and Pacifica learners as priority groups, expanding the, uh, the skilled literacy and numeracy teaching workforce, building that research and knowledge base as we go, which is very important in the evidence, and encouraging employers and other agencies to include literacy and numeracy in their training systems. Um, and I'd like to um, thank the various employer groups um, and union groups for helping, helping encourage that. And finally, increased use of the new technology in the development of literacy and numeracy resources, including um, online learning systems and assessment. So that's where I see it going. Um, and I just wanted to finish by uh, once again thanking you all for the work you're doing here and uh, in your respective roles. The work you are doing, I believe, is making and will continue to make an enormous difference uh, to the lives of those who missed out their first time around in uh, education. Um, and as a result of that, a uh, significant difference for the country. And I'm looking forward to the day where we don't actually have to tell the story of just how many adults in New Zealand um, can't uh, uh, read and write ad adequately and do their numeracy adequately for the levels that they need them to do. Um, and uh, certainly I hope to hang around long enough to, to be able to um, be part of that, um, that uh, celebration when we get to that point. So thank you very, very much for having me here today. Um, and I read all the stuff, um, all the, all the uh, agenda items through the day, which was you know, real meat, meat and drink of what you're doing. Um, and I found it fascinating. So actually I want to turn the tables a little bit um, and ask you some questions about how it's going. Uh, we'll, so we can do that on the way through. So if you've got any particular statements or anything, or anything in particular you think I need to be aware of in terms of how it's actually working at that coalface, um, then I would rather hear that as well, as well as questions. Sure thing. It's heartening to 
know that you're passionate about what we are doing. If you hang around with us a bit longer, we may be able to turn that into a business as usual for you. <laughs> it's become our business as usual. Yeah. It's also heartening to hear your, um, the progress for future. That sounds really great. <coughs> Nobody ever does. Certainly there's no intention to move any money away from this area at this point. Um, and I'm quite happy to make the argument to put some more in. I suppose what I'd like a bit more of a feel of it, you know, uh, my, of how it's going and a bit more um, a bit more sort of performance feedback before we go to that next stage um, but um, uh, but certainly uh, no desire to, to move any of the money that's been earmarked in this area away and, and actually desire to put it in but I'd just like to know exactly the best way to do it if that's what's required I'm one of these people that um, uh, another thing I'm quite passionate about is not not getting myself into a situation where I'm putting more money in um, because that's the definition of success. Like I've lobbied bills sufficiently that I can get some more money for X. I'd much rather go back and say, look, here's what we're achieving. This is the evidence, this is the results that we're getting um, in some sort of empirical sense. Uh, and um, as a result of that, we think we're really onto something here and I'd now like to move it to this level over here. That's a, I'd much rather have that discussion. <laughs>